You are listening to a Titan Talk with Charles and Jesse, your home for everything regarding DC's TV show Titans. Gentlemen, bring it on. Titans, go! Titans fans, welcome back to Titan Talk, the Titans podcast. I'm Charles Skaggs. At least I'm pretty sure it's Titan Talk, the Titans podcast this time. Uh, welcome back to, uh, you know, here we are. We're going to talk about uh, another episode of Titans as we build up to the season finale. And uh, I'm here with my Titan favorite Titan talker, everybody's favorite Titan talker, Jesse Jackson. I don't know. I think you might be a certain Lori's favorite Titan talker. Well, you know, I don't get to talk Titans as well as with my wife, Lori, as I do get to do, as I do with you, Jesse, here on the podcast. So absolutely. So, so as far as Titans talking goes, I think you're my favorite Titans talker. How's All that? right. Very nice. All right. Let's I, go um, with that. So, I am so, thrilled to be talking. We are getting close to the end of the journey. And yes. this episode that we're discussing is, um, I said right before we hit record, this is the tale of two cities, the best of episodes and the worst of episodes. So oh. I am looking forward to talking to you about it. All right. So here for episode 17 of Titan Talk, we're going to talk about Coriander. And not just, of course, the character, but also the episode title. Here, which is episode 10 of Titans first season, the penultimate episode of Titans first season, as it turns out, which we'll talk about here briefly, uh, just came out on December 14th, 2018, written by Gabrielle Stanton, who wrote, uh, co-wrote the episode together earlier in the season and directed by new director Maya Vervilo, who's directed some other comic book television shows that, um, Current friend of the show, Karen Lindsay, and I talk about on the Fandom Zone podcast. But uh, curious to – now that you're talking about your tale of two cities as you get all Charles Dickens on us, um, and very appropriately considering we're getting close to the holidays, but that's a different Charles Dickens tale, of course. Yes. Um, curious about why you feel this way. So, Jesse, before we get into our guest cast, uh, let's get your general thoughts on this episode. Um. Just a very strange pacing. Um, you know, it feels like it, um, to me, very slow, slow, slow. Oh, a little bit of action, slow, slow, slow. Oh, major action, major reveal. And now then, oh, well, of course we have to have a cliffhanger. Right. And it was just a little frustrating. Um I don't know. Maybe they have built this season to be a binge season. Right. You know, maybe they have built this with the idea that – Everybody because, will watch it all at once in one shot. Because this is – it is an online service that people who come in later will be able to download and watch everything. But right. it just I, – I felt it, it – it it just it suffered from pacing to me. Yeah. Well, I think part you? of the well, I think part of the problem, and we talked about this last time, yeah. was that the momentum abruptly braked to a halt. That you know we, we had we had that great cliffhanger uh, a couple episodes ago, um, where uh, Corey was you know, like her memories had been triggered, and she like her eyes started glowing, and she started strangling Rachel. And then we cut away to 
the Hank and Dawn origin, you know, the Hawk and Dove origin episode, Hank and Dawn. And it just, while it was great, it just completely, you know, froze the momentum that had been building from that cliffhanger. And so that here we are two episodes later to find out what ha happens. And, uh, you know, it doesn't come off as, as, as powerful as I think it should have. Well, and Charles, um, we don't see Hank and Dawn this episode. I mean, no. I, that's, I just thought of that when you mentioned Well, we, we, do, we kind of do briefly because we get Raven's point of view but, from when she was reaching out to Hawk in the uh, you know in the last episode, but not really, no. Exactly. So, it, so why so, so was again, it so, so again, this, important that yeah. we stop everything, go back to this, right. and then – and without being jumping ahead, yeah. And then when you see the previews for next week that everyone is so mm -hmm. happy of, you like, how do we get from here to there? I have a theory about that, which I will tell talk about okay, later. Good. Well, I have a theory too. Okay. But it doesn't. It might it, be the same theory. We'll it find out. It doesn't look very. It it's not very seamless. Let's just put no. it this way. It no, no, it is very disjointed. I totally yes. get that. Yes. Yeah. And so All I right. think that's why, you know. Yeah, and we'll and we'll dive into this a little okay. bit. But Sounds yeah, good. but I totally get your point on this. Is that, um, yeah, it 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 the flow certainly isn't there. The narrative flow, and uh, could have been executed better. And again, and we talked about again last week. We talked about this that the Hank and Dawn episode should have really been reordered. In the um, in the in the episode release order, it just doesn't. It it could have easily been you know just take out that little Raven little tease, and uh, I think the narrative flow would have been much stronger, personally. And, and I'm as much as I like um, the character of you know. Hank and Dawn, as well yes. as Hawk and Dove, right. you know, unless something major happens next week, right? we could have left them – Where they were? Yeah, where they were. And Over then, the – oh, and then pick up with them in season two is what you're yes, saying. Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay, that's what I get. All right. Okay. So uh, so we do have some new – a couple of new cast members, well, at least one major new cast member this episode. Um <laughs> First and foremost, Seamus Daver, who, I'm, uh, who uh, is finally revealed and confirmed as Trigon, which we had speculated earlier uh, this season. And thankfully, yay, uh, speculation – our speculation was correct on that one. He's obviously known to you, Jesse, because you were a fan of the ABC series Castle. Yes. Where he where played – played, Yeah, Detective Kevin Ryan on that show. And um, he's also has a couple of other comic book connections, comic book television and comic book movie connections. He was in the movie Hollywood land that if you remember, that was the Ben Affleck movie uh, murder mystery of the murder of George Reeves, the original uh, Superman from the 1950s series, the adventures of Superman. Good movie. And great movie. I like that movie a lot. It's very and it's uh and it's one of the great uh, unsung, well, really un um, hyped uh, tragic murders of the time period. A lot of people don't really consider George Reeves' death. They consider it like maybe a suicide, but it was actually a murder. And um, so that was great movie. Uh, he also played a character named Don Eichmann on the FX series Legion. Which I'm a huge fan of, and uh, so that was pretty cool. And he's also on episodes of Mad Men and some other things, but mm -hmm. uh, pretty uh, pretty decent choice so far. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. Um. When we and I know that will be a category. Yeah. A, yeah. Obviously, we'll we're going to talk about I'll, Trigon later. I'll save my thoughts to share with you on that. Okay. Great. On this uh, we, get the, we get the return, of course. Connor Leslie is Donna Troy. Who's always great on this show so far, even though Boy, she's only been two two episodes. But the more I see her, the more I just go, "Gosh, this is let's 
let's she need, she needs to be a series regular. Let's just put it that way. Yes, and let's you know, gosh darn it, let's forget getting the team together. Let's just go ahead and get them going. Yes. I mean, you know, enough. We've done enough setup. Let's get to, let's get to the good stuff. Yes. Right? All right. Uh, we also get we also get Rachel Nichols as Angela Azarath, and uh, who does a very interesting heel turn this episode, which we kind of wondered might possibly happen, especially you, Jesse. Yes. Um, and then we get the introduction of a character named Jeff Roop. Very briefly, he plays um, Rachel's neighbor. Tommy Carson, or at least the uh, someone she knew from back in the day. Oh, and he turns we out hardly to, knew you. <laughs> yes, we hardly knew you because he's the expendable, as it turns out in this episode. Uh, but he's also revealed to be the sheriff, and we'll talk about him. He's been on episodes of Suits, uh, the Ransom TV series, CSI New York, and Numbers, among okay. others. So that's where you may have seen that guy before. Okay. And other stuff. All right. Um, so. Breaking down our topics this week, obviously I want to talk about Coriander because, hey, the episode is titled Coriander. And then I want to talk about Dick and Donna in our second segment. And then, of course, in our third segment, we want to talk about Rachel and her father, Trigon, and her mom, Angela. The f- a rather interesting family affair, as yes. Donna self puts it. Um, so we'll talk about that. So – with uh, with that in mind, let's get into our main topics. Uh, theme this week should be pretty obvious, especially to Jesse, being a classic rock fan. So, first topic: two thousand light years from home. Mm, okay. Okay. Um, and that, of course, is Coriander, aka Cory Anders, and uh, we finally get uh, Cory's memories coming back, and we get some major. Um, confirmations, of course, about her background as Starfire that we know from the comics. And we get to find out, hey, she's got herself a spaceship. A and big a spaceship. Big-ass spaceship. And uh, yes. so, which I'm guessing will probably factor into season two. Yes. That's my guess. So we'll see. But um, so I want to get your thoughts on, on Anna Diop as Corey Ender in this episode. <laughs> Um, I liked seeing her being crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, I loved the fight between her and Donna. Right. And the, uh, we had a, and I did not write the quote down, so I'm probably stealing one of your quotes, but let's see when she says, um, you know, who are you? Um, Oh yeah, yeah. I got, I got that one. Okay, good. I will leave it it alone. Um, All right. That but, was, but yeah, but she seems yeah immediately a little threatened by Donna, which I thought yeah. was interesting. Yeah, and um, you know we get to see um, the lasso, uh, yeah. and we'll talk about that when Gar when is t- little free. You know, Gar yeah. is a um, the Titans are the Beatles to Gar, or yes. you two or Bruce Springsteen the Eastern Band. Pick your, you know. He is their boy band. He just well, loves if, them, and he just, well, it's just he's the, he's the, the the team geek, and yes. he's just geeking out over this. So, yeah. so yeah, that's one of the things that um, in this segment, kind of picking up after the events yeah. of two episodes ago. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So why don't we do that? When we just we we'll pick up, you know, where we had the cliffhanger. Corey is strangling Rachel, yeah. and. Her eyes are all glowy, and and uh, and apparently, as we find out from Rachel's bruises, that yeah, she was really gripping her pretty hard, and uh, has to be fought off. And with uh, with the help of Dick and Donna, who show up just in the nick of time. So, what did what did you think of the resolution of the cliffhanger? I thought it was a good one. I thought her going into battle mode. Yeah. Her kind of. It's- Kind of a killing machine almost. Yeah, becoming almost, you know, Starfire totally. Yes. And then kind of waking up afterwards and like, hey, what happened? Right. And Like, like you know, oh, we're all cool, right? Yeah, she doesn't yeah. – she acts like, you know, nothing happened. And, and everybody's just kind of freaked out, especially Rachel who's really freaked by her. Yeah. And often 
Charles, that can come across kind of cheesy. Right. But um, I think she sold it. She really did sell, like, what? Yeah. You know, I, I didn't remember anything at all. So I really liked it. Um, the spaceship looked cool. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I'm a sucker for a spaceship in a barn like. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, this, this, is, this is yeah, this is like kind of like a, like an abandoned factory on the yes. outskirts of town. Yes, and uh, yeah, we find out that um, apparently Corey's got a cloak spaceship. So apparently, she's got herself a nice little uh, Klingon or Romulan cloaking device. Yes, and uh, to use a little Star Trek reference, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, I thought that was cool too. So, so while we're on this on the subject of the spaceship. Yeah. All right, so let's kind of run this down a little bit. Sure. So, um, so Corey, uh, after leaving, like being all discombobulated by these flashes of memories that she's getting, she takes off in the stolen pickup truck, drives away, um, presumably starting to recall stuff. Dick and Donna are in pursuit, and they track they track her down to this like I said, factory on the outskirts of town and they go inside and follow her. And eventually they come across a, a certain spot where they're all three of them are scanned by this kind of purple scanning device. You know, mm -hmm. this purple light that kind of envelops them. Yeah. And, and then the spaceship itself kind of um, speaks and says coriander and Corey responds, Exal, which if you're familiar with Corey's background from the comics, from the New Teen Titans, Exal is the kind of um, kind of spiritual godlike being that Corey worships on Tamaran. Right. And so Exal is essentially like this in this term, a uh, like a, a like a, a password. Mm -hmm. And that apparently gives her access into the ship. The ship lowers the bay, this landing bay. They Corey walks inside. Dick and Donna kind of look at each other, and they're like, okay, I guess we're going in after her. So did – what so did you what think? think about that whole, that whole sequence? When, when you saw the um, – it looked almost like a transporter. I figured it was right. some kind of scanning. I yeah. thought that looked pretty cool. I, I – um, the spaceship looked good, right? Um, and I um, I liked that whole segment. Um, I think it took a little too long to get there, and that was my complaint. Yeah. About um, and I think maybe what really dragged, and we'll talk about that later. But I think it would have been more interesting to spend a little more time with. Um, in the spaceship and with Corey and right. and kind of learning more about it. Um, you you see the premise or the potential of these three, you know, kind of leaders of the Titans. Right. And and that's why I mentioned earlier. Hey, I'm ready to get this thing going. Yes. You know, let's watch them work together. Yeah. So it's like get on with it already. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Now I did. Now obviously in this in this spaceship sequence, we get a lot of interest uh, necessary exposition here. Yes. Uh, we get basically background on that Corey's whole deal with Rachel is mm -hmm. apparently that um, there's as we've surmised that there's this prophecy and. Um, Apparently that they come across this book that's resting on this on this console inside the spaceship called The Death of Worlds, mm -hmm. which is apparently filled with pictures of Tamaranians suffering and fire. And um, Corey's hand activates the console, which brings up this future projection of Tamaran burning. So we get to see a little hologram of, of Tamaran, her home planet. Yes. And Corey's like, well, unless Rachel dies, my world will. And we get, um, you know, Dick uh, or Corey activating the console and she talks about <laughs> that Trigon. We, so we get the like the, the first um, confirmation of Trigon's name here. 
which was a long time coming. So they finally stopped dancing around it and named Trigon Trigon. And apparently, like, the, the, there's this whole um, – we find out that, that Corey th- now remembers that it's not Raven that really brings about the destruction. It's Trigon. Yes. And, and that apparently Earth is going to be, like, the first place he's going to conquer – and then he'll start working on the rest of the universe, and but eventually all worlds, including her world, will burn. So, uh, what did you think of that whole revelation? Um, it was um, I, I I was happy with it. I mean, I yep. think they um, you know, you've got to you make some decisions on how we're going to condense the story and make it tv friendly Um, right so i thought that was good choices i thought the whole idea of you know do you stop you know the cost of someone innocent to save hundreds thousands of billions of people right it's always an interesting discussion uh, you know, for a comic book or a movie, I, I really thought they executed that really well. Um, and uh, yeah, and I think we still, uh, we, we still had some lingering questions, though. We're like, yes, we still don't know how um, the circumstances leading up to Corey landing on Earth. We still don't right. know why she ended up getting like this storage locker and, yeah. um, you know, and how apparently he, Donna and the Amazons knew of um, her Tamaranian language from or, thousands of years ago, this ancient Sumerian dialect or, or offshoot or whatever. Or the um, – yeah, the whole beautiful mind wall. And, yes. You know, all the other things that – yeah. We, yeah, we so, we, so we really still have some – yes. So, yeah, we still have a lot of questions. Mm-hmm. Um, but at least we're starting – we were starting to get some answers here. I agree. And and I like – and Donna was very impressed with Corey's spaceship. She's just like, yes. okay, I, I admit it. I'm impressed. Yeah, exactly. So that was good. But uh, mm-hmm. but um, interestingly, for an episode named Coriander, we kind of it, – it was – and maybe this is probably why this episode doesn't quite work as well as it should is that um, it just cuts away. Like, hey, you expect – well, okay, I guess we're going to – Get a big deep dive into Corey's character, and we start to, and then we we slam on the brakes and cut over to uh, the Trigon storyline. Yes, as we're because we're trying to build up right to the season finale. Mm-hmm. So it does seem a little abrupt. I agree. Yeah, but uh, but that was good. So mm-hmm. all right, uh, anything else about Corey before we move on? Nope. All right. Now I noticed. Um. Someone mentioned that she got out of the horrible dress and was in her costume. Yes. I she, did not see that. What, I missed what, that somehow. Well, what happened – that was um, – now, if you remember that we had seen like – she was – she had these flashing images of when she was first at the factory. Okay. She was wearing this kind of skin-tight suit, like kind of like a leotard-type suit. Okay. And then, and then in the car where she's riding in the back with Dick and Donna – she changes yeah. her clothes okay. into that suit. All right, I will so, have to go back and watch that. So, I missed so, that part. Yeah, so so it's essentially it's it's toward the end when she's riding. You know, when they're going to um, they're racing toward uh, Rachel or Angela's house. Okay. And uh, Corey's in the back seat, and she kind of changes clothes in the back seat. Well, as much as I've been on the record about not liking her clothes, <laughs> yes, I apologize, listeners, that I did not catch that. I was to say, I thought you of all people would have like been right on, zeroed right in on that but one. But in the spirit of clear dis, uh, disclosure, mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> my wife and I were um, spending uh, a lot of quality time yesterday, and she has been wanting me to binge the Good Fight, which okay. is the CBS direct uh, sequel to The Good Wife, and at um, one a.m. Linda finally said, oh, I guess I'm going to go to bed, or should we watch more, one more episode? And I said, well, I still need to watch the Titan episode, so Charles right. and I could talk about so, so it. Wasn't, so what you're saying is it was very late in the evening. Yeah, so maybe 
you know, we can get up tomorrow and <laughs> watch some more. <laughs> so, uh, yes. Um, yeah. So I'm, yeah, I'm, uh, so I will go back and see that. See, I, 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 I'm a bit of a more of an advantage than you because what's gotten our, our Friday night ritual this, these past weeks, uh, Lori and I come home from work. We grab some five guys, take out oh, nice. and come, come back. Uh, have some very tasty burgers. Yes. And uh, enjoy the Titans episode as we're eating our tasty burgers. So, Five Guys is a much better burger. Yeah. Than um, In and Out. You know that. Oh yeah, yeah. Because you know In and Out was. I, I've never had In and Out burgers. I know we're kind of totally digressing on on burger. Yes. This is now burger talk. Yes. But but yeah, the. Uh, Both of I, them uh, came to da- uh, to the Dallas area. Yeah. And uh, I know In and Out is a ritual in uh, yeah. Vegas and California, and it's an okay burger. But in uh, but Five Guys is a fantastic burger. Well, we have so. we have five we have a Five Guys just where we live. There's like a, a, a supermarket, and then right on the other side of the supermarket is the Five Guys. So it's just very very close. So oh, that's perfect. So we can come back, and everything's all still nice and hot and fresh, and yeah, ooh, uh, nice. Okay. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Now so I'm gonna highly, have to go get five guys so, for to watch the Cowboy game today. <laughs> yeah, I definitely recommend one, the Five Guys and Titans. It goes great together. Yes, all indeed. Right. Okay. Uh, free plug. I hope they send us a yeah. check for that. Um, yes. All right. Topic number two. Let's spend the night together. Ah, a little Rolling Stones. Yeah, maybe, Are maybe. Do? Yeah, classic yep. rock. Yep. Uh, start me up. Yep, uh, yep. So, so. Yeah, okay. So let's spend the night together, and this is a kind of a nod to um, this moment in the car between Dick and Donna. So I want to talk about Dick and Donna in this episode. Okay. Uh, who get paired up once again because they're pursuing Corey and uh, some uh, some more great character moments between Dick and Donna. I never get tired of watching these two. They and... are so good. Right. Um, so let's talk about Dick and Donna. All okay. Right. All right. So um, still picking up from the cliffhanger. We go back to the cliffhanger. Um, when Dick and Donna show up, uh, the big moment, of course, uh, Dick tries to insert himself, but gets kind of smacked around because he's just mere puny human. And then Donna shows up. And if you're a Donna Troy fan, you had to be geeking out pretty hard at this because she breaks out the lasso of persuasion and uh, uses that to take down Corey. So what did you think about that moment? I loved it. I love – and you knew immediately what it was. Now, they had shown a little sneak of that in, in the, trailer. the preview. Yeah. yeah. Um, so – but it was, still was great to see. It was cool um, to see the full sequence. It yeah. was. And um, we've already established that Donna Troy is very much a badass. Right. Uh, we watched her fight. We watched her do, um, you know, the acrobats. Um, how well she moved. She left. She left over a truck, and yes. Yeah, while Dick had to do a little less, he was a little less graceful. I, I, um, yeah, the great the Grayson, pun, it, Mr. Grayson. Yeah, yeah Grayson's yeah. not very graceful compared to Donna, obviously. Yeah, and uh, so it she, was awesome to see her. I um, I love the fact that there is not a hint of romance. Right between Donna and uh, Dick. I hope that is, never changes. Because I hope, it, yeah, this the, is, the, the whole brother sister thing works so well for these two characters. It, it, such a good thing, um, and even her calling her when she goes, "You slept with her, didn't you?" You know, he she that, called, that was yeah, and, and that's the moment I went the, where I got my uh, segment title from because yeah. that's a great moment in the car. So. Yeah. Um, to kind of shift gears a little, little bit, I know we're kind of jumping ahead again, but yeah. the um, so they're in the car, and Donna flatly calls out Dick for just sleeping around because yeah. he's coming up with all kinds of excuses for Corey's behavior, mm-hmm. and and so she just immediately clicks in on it because she knows him so well, and she's just like, "You slept with her, didn't you?" Yeah, and he's like, "What? What? What are you talking about?" Yeah. 
<laughs> Which I thought was rather funny. Yeah, it was just hilarious. And then um, the – and we get a thing about um, you always did go for the um, bad girls or – The know, dangerous, tr- dangerous, dangerous girls, yeah. Except Dawn, and you really messed that one up. Yes, yeah. She's just like, you really effed that one up, didn't you? Yes. Yeah, and so that was kind of a nice um, thought too that I was glad to see that um, – we can i'm sure we'll get into next season hopefully right what was about that um and i don't remember um dawn and dick having a relationship in the comics was there no there wasn't that was, this is something that the titans tv series has invented and i like that i think it's but, a nice ring well it's interesting because for one thing it makes sense because hey well okay dove's a crime fighter Robin's a crime fighter. They were working together for a while, mm-hmm. and it created that friction between Hawk and Robin. Yes, yes. because of of each other's feelings for Dawn, and yes. of course puts kind of Dawn in the middle of that. Absolutely. But um, but so I thought that was kind of a, a very interesting creative decision. I didn't. I definitely didn't have a problem with it. I thought it made it kind of yeah. created some conflict and it wasn't too obtrusive. So I didn't have a problem with it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now, now one of the things before – back to the farm mm-hmm. uh, I thought was kind of cool was this moment when Dick and Donna – Corey goes outside after the confrontation, yes. and she's kind of, again, kind of flailing a little bit, and she starts taking off in the truck, and then Donna – whips out this kind of star-shaped tracking device and hurls it at the truck – and you know, attaches to the back of the truck, and then she pulls out her phone, which apparently she has an app to track the. Uh, there's always an app for that, and she tracks the uh, Corey's location on it. And Dick kind of does this little like double take, and he looks over at her, like you know, really? And she's just like, what? You know, like you know, you don't, you, know, you like, you're not the only one with gadgets. So I thought yeah. that was. Yeah, like I've got cool toys too. Right. Yeah, I, you, I don't, love you don't get to that. be the only. Yeah, that was it was very unexpected. And I just love the fact that like yeah, well hey, you know Donna's Donna can have cool stuff too, not just Dick Grayson. Yeah. They have. She's been so, at this game quite as, just as long as he has. They have so much chemistry. Yes, and just I just I love them together. Yeah. Right. I just thought that was a great moment. Mm-hmm. And, I agree. And it was a nice little, uh, like, unexpected uh, moment there that I really liked. Yeah. Uh, so we talked about Dick and Donna inside uh, Corey's spaceship. Mm-hmm. And um, Donna making the connection that, um, as we find out, you know, there she's looking through that Death of Worlds book. Right, and she's kind of studying the images, and she's just like, uh, you know, points out, you know, like, well, okay, here's Trigon with Rachel, and here's Trigon with Angela, and she's just like, well, they look cozy. It's a family affair, mm-hmm. and uh, so Donna making that connection first that before Mister Dick Grayson, the the master detective, that um, you know, like, well. Angela is in on it too, yes. presumably. So I thought that was a good moment. Now we had made that um, – we had that theory fairly early. Right. We did not trust her. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you especially were, were kind of zeroing yes. and like, well, maybe we shouldn't be so trusting. Right. And um, so – and we'll talk about that here in a minute. But yeah. uh, anything else about Dick and Don in this episode? Uh, no, I think that's enough. We, we, um, we, we had that nice confrontation, of course, between Donna and Corey. Yes, where they kind of go, hey, yep. who are you? Yeah, and, and uh, Donna kind of like, well, I'm the guy, one who knocked you out, and that was yeah. pretty good. Yeah, and, was good. and she says, want to try it again? <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. good. Yeah. So that was good. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, topic number three, sympathy mm-hmm. for the devil. Ah, yep. So. So, of course, Rolling Stones song titles, uh, yes. which I thought this last one especially was very fitting. Yes, perfect. 
And so this, of course, Raven and Trigon and Angela and uh, our our little uh, – our cozy little family, as Donna puts it. Mm-hmm. And uh, obviously Raven meets her dad, Trigon, for the first time, who shows up in human form as mm-hmm. Seamus Dever, and which was, of, of course, I'm sure a lot of disappointing to a lot of fans. But I think there was a reason for that. And and we'll and we'll talk about that and uh, and Angela of course does her big heel turn, killing um, Tommy Carson the sheriff. So I want to get all your thoughts on all of this that happened. So I think first off I approve of having Trigon look human. Yeah, I think that makes more sense. Not only um, for the TV camera, right? Know, the TV viewer, but story-wise, um, you know, it's the same reason Lucifer. It works so well that Lucifer looks human and attractive. You know, he is this um, the most beautiful of all angels. Right. Plug for the new season of Lucifer coming up. Yeah, I'm sure we'll we, be we should really be getting some zone. kick. We should really be getting some kickbacks for all these uh, yes. the plugs that we're doing, free plugs. Um, so and um, Seamus is such a likable person. Um, Ryan was an, on, on, on Castle. Yeah. yeah, he as a character, he was amazingly likable and funny, and so I think this is great casting, and I love the the way he played. Anything for you, dear. You know, and and he's so happy. Do you think see. he has the Do you think he has the chops to pull this off? This I do. roll off. I okay. do think so. I think that, um, and I think we'll have to see how they're going to do this and and where they're trying to story. And that's why I'm really curious about your theory of how we're getting to Gotham. And right. our Batman, uh, but yes, I, I'm I'm really looking forward to this. Okay, so um, so my my take on the whole Trigon appearing as a human, yeah, so far, uh, is that for well, and I talked about this with my brother-in-law John Brockhouse pre- uh, previously, right before we started recording okay. this podcast. So so shout out to John if you're listening. Hi John. Hey John. Um, the my take on it is that that um, the reason they did it this way is obviously primarily the budget. Yes. Uh, as we've kind of talked about during this course of this series, the series does not have a great strong budget. Like you know, it's t- definitely not Game of Thrones level. Let's just put right. it that way. Um, and they obviously spent a lot of money on the spaceship in this episode. Yes, and and the special effects involved with the decloaking and whatnot. And the scanning. So it's not really a surprise that, okay, Trigon, they kind of skimped on this. Now, the reason that I think it kind of sort of works is because if you're, if you're a fan of the Wolfman and Perez uh, New Teen Titans run, you remember that um, in Raven's origin story, in I think it was uh, Tales of the New Teen Titans number two, I believe, where we saw that uh, when Trigon first met Arella, mm-hmm. aka Angela, um, Raven's mom, he came he came to her in human form. Yes, because he was trying to seduce her, and you know he's obviously wanting you know to procreate with her, so that he could create a little demon spawn in the form of right. of a daughter. So so. Obviously, he needs to be more appealing. He doesn't want to come off as looking like a demon. And so he comes to her in human form, and then ultimately, after he knocks her up, is when he reveals his true self and is like, oh, hey, I'm this you know red demon-looking thing called Trigon. And so, um, so what I think here is that he obviously is using his influence over Angela – here in the series. So he's coming to her as still in his human form. I don't think he's ever revealed his demonic form to her by the, by the look of it. I, I don't think so either. And I think, 
Um, I, I she, she just think, oh, he's this hot guy, and he's very charismatic right. and powerful. And he has a, um, you know, he's powerful. Uh, now, I think he has shared with her that he is not up to good things. You know, right. uh, but she is, um, you know, she she's understanding. It's okay. She's kind of once again. She's gone toward the bad guy, right? You know, a bad boy. Uh, so I, I like that. I think it's a good decision. I was very happy with it, and um, and I am I'm really thinking he's going to sell the role. Yeah. Now, for those who are obviously disappointed that well, hey, we didn't get Trigon in demonic form. If you paid attention, uh, during the scenes on Corey's ship, when mm -hmm. she was at the console, she kind of brings up this flickering image of the true Trigon in yes. his demonic form. Very briefly, we got to see that. It's kind of more like a hulking yeah. uh, creature with you know horns and whatnot. Um, so maybe at some point we'll get to see the real deal. Yeah, absolutely. There is a good chance for that, but I mean it's okay. Yeah. You know. So obviously, and you know, they could they can draw this out a little bit. So Absolutely. they've got they've got time. But my point is is that you know don't get immediately discouraged. Like oh, we're never going to see Trigon in demonic form. Just just wait. We might. Absolutely. Patience. It's okay. It is. I know that's very I know that's very hard for people these days. Patience. Absolutely. But, right. um, but try to be a little patient here. I'm guessing. Uh, now, Ange now Angela, I want to talk about because Angela, my question to you, my question to you, do you think Angela was always in the tank for Trigon, or do you think that maybe returning to the house, kind of, and it's kind of evil influence because obviously something's going on with that house. Yeah. Uh, we, do you think? Do you think? Do you think it kind of like swayed her? Well, when she was there, like, you know, it was exerting its evil influence, kind of like the way it was doing to to Gar, Beast Boy, in this episode. Yeah, um, I think she's always been – I mean, I think this was her plan all along. Okay, so you think – so In the house, she knew okay. that's where it was the connection. In my mind, right. there, that is where there is a connection – to where uh, Trigon was being um, imprisoned. She right. knew that's where we could go. I believe that uh, this was – she was the long game all along. I believe she somehow poisoned Gar right. with the stuff from the, um, you know, the vegetables. Oh, the soup maybe yeah, or something. Soup, yeah, the soup, yeah, somehow. And um, so th I think this was all a long plan that okay. she wanted to then get them trusting her. That she can manipulate right. um, Rachel to feel like she had no other choice but to release her father yeah. for people now, for the right reasons. Now, me, I'm I'm still holding out a little bit of hope. I, you know, I'm not, maybe not totally sold on it, but I'm holding out hope that it was just Trigon's influence over her. Wow, that. Charles because being the optimistic I, one. I I think I'm pretty optimistic okay, for I'm by saying, and large. Yes. But 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 I'm hoping out holding out hope that maybe it was just the evil influence of Trigon that okay. that maybe that because remember we saw her in that scene, she's going up she was in the room with the flickering lights mm -hmm. and you know she hears the staticky noise on the phone. Okay. And I'm thinking that you know part of that was just you know the the house working its way into her head. Okay. So so that maybe she didn't realize like maybe maybe she wasn't aware that she had poisoned Gar's soup or okay. that she wasn't aware of the the fact that like uh, um, in control of her body when she killed the sheriff. Okay. And so I'm hoping that's the case because I want. Uh, Angela Arella from the comics was a good character. Uh, okay. You know, she she wasn't evil. So now for the show, obviously she could be something different. But yeah. I'm holding out hope that we'll still find out that that 
because in the comics it's important because Angela makes this big sacrifice to save Raven from Trigon in the comics. Mm -hmm. So I'm holding out hope that that will happen here on the show. Okay. We'll um, see. We'll see if I, if it happens. I could be completely I, wrong. I, and, I would not uh, be disappointed if that was the case. Right. I, I don't see that right now, but it makes sense if it is. I mean, you know, I think that's a good because story. obviously, yeah. Just you know, you obviously want you know, like, hey, you'd like it if, if like Raven had something good in her life, like like both parents weren't evil. So yeah, that uh, would be nice, especially yeah, especially considering well, her dad is this ultimate demonic being. So it would be kind of nice if like, hey, her mom was actually okay, but under you know Trigon's control or something. So she's not responsible for those horrible things she did. Yes. So we'll see, we'll see. But I just thought that was that was it. Okay. Um, and then toward the end of the episode, of course, Gar is sick. Uh, because of being poisoned or what have you, seeing and, visions of himself covered in blood, right? Yeah, nose like bleeding and everything. Yeah, and, and and seeing that guy that he mauled as a tiger, the asylum scientist. Yes. So, again, I think that was the house trying to exert its evil influence over him, and mm -hmm. that reflection with the blood in his mouth was his dark side, yes. um, being shown. So maybe the house is trying to control him as well. We'll find out. And yeah. I definitely want to keep – I think we should keep an eye on Gar because of that. And um, that uh, you know, ultimately Raven try, or Rachel tries to heal him, but it's not enough. And so Angela is like, well, hey, the only – you know, if you help bring your father through – he can heal Gar. Yeah. So she's like, uh, okay. And she reaches into this mirror, which it turns out to be like this portal, and apparently pulls him through it because she's apparently the only one that can do that to release him from that dimension. And, and so he steps through in human form, and uh, she begs him to heal Gar, yeah. which he does. With he puts on a little bit of an effort, should, you know, like like this is a major struggle for him to do this, mm -hmm. but he does it, and she's very grateful. She she hugs him. Yes. And you know, and he makes this comment like, "Well, I'm finally home." Yes. And uh, like, hey, we're all just one big happy family here. Yeah. And so, so what do you think about that moment? I thought that was really, really well done um that she she's so worried about gar yeah um and then you know her mom gives that suggestion well you can heal him and you know she's yes. trying she's trying and then i know wow i just thought of this yeah your dad's and really powerful yeah, um, and, and, he, and then you notice that that rather sinister line that Angela gives, like "Bring him back to me." Yeah. So I thought that, that was very telling, of course. Mm -hmm. So that 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 she's apparently just all in as far as like being enraptured by Trigon. Yeah. So we'll see. again, yeah, we'll is see. that is that is that influence or is that she's really that evil or and, and swayed and swayed. She sure seems to be very, very. It could, it could go either way. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. It, whatever way it happens, I will not be. You know, it won't catch me off guard. Let's just put it that way. Absolutely. And then, of course, at the end of the episode, very end of the episode, um, we have Dick, Donna, and Corey showing up at the house, and it's cloaked, but they kind of notice this ripple where the house should be, so. Interestingly, Dick just dives right in. He starts running right at it, passes through, and then Corey and Donna try to follow him but get repelled yeah. by whatever's around the house. And for whatever reason, we don't know why yet that only Dick Grayson was allowed to pass through. And we last time we see him, he's, he's at the front door. He opens the door and goes in. 
And that's our cl- kind of like cliffhanger at the end of that episode. Yeah. So the thought is, at least my theory, and this may lead into your theory. Right. Um, Angela says, are we going to destroy the world now or right. set the yeah. world on eat, fire? Eat, eat, eat the world. Yeah, yeah, eat the world. That's it. Yeah. And he says, not till her heart is broken or something along those yeah. lines. Yeah. So – Dick has become close and important to Rachel very, very quickly. Right. Um, I think because having someone in her life is – this has been – she has not had a lot of kindness and a lot of goodness. Right. And despite a rocky stop, he's become something very special to her. Yeah, she sees him as her protector. Yes, and so to – they're going to do something to um, hurt him, and that's right. why they're letting him in because he – they need to – they need to manipulate them. They need right. to make him hurt right. so that and, – and ultimately kill him. At yeah. least that's my theory. My, th- my theory is that it's, it's both um, Gar and Dick. Okay. So I think I think Trigon wants to come at Rachel from two points. That okay. with Gar, I think that was the reason why we we're seeing him look in the mirror and see that that bloody mouth reflection. Okay. That he's succumbing to the evil forces, and then what we're going to get next time mm-hmm. is going to be. I don't think it's really going to happen, and we'll talk about that when we talk about next week's episode. But I don't think it's going to – I think it's all going to be uh, uh, a projection that Trigon put in Dick Grayson's head to corrupt him and make him evil. Um, so, so basically it would take away all of Rachel's hope and break her. Um, I – that is my first thought as well. When I was watching the previews, Yeah. Um, I said, okay – He's – this is in his mind, you know, uh, and because – Because it, because it's so out there. It, well, and even if it wasn't out there, even right. if they were – if they had been in Gotham this whole time. Right. Um, but how do you get from Ohio or wherever they are yeah. to Gotham to – I mean just there's too much – I guess we could see hand Trigon. Wave, hand, a lot of hand waving. Yeah, Trigon snap his fingers and move yes, from there. Right. So yeah, I, I just I, I agree with you. Yeah, yeah. So what so what we're talking about is the the trailer for next week, uh, the season Titan season one finale where yeah, and we and we sorry. saw we hang on Charles. Yeah. Um, we we've, we've never done spoilers, and so if you're one of those people that don't watch. The right. previews, we apologize, but uh, you know. Well, the tra- well the trailer yeah. is the trailer is out there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so this so this is kind of a spoiler. And then, interestingly, they didn't tack it on to the end of this no, episode. No, they did not, did they? So they released it separately. I'm not sure why they did that. Unless I don't they know forgot, either. Unless they forgot to tack it on, but um, it does seem kind of weird that they wouldn't give the trailer. Well, uh, and I think the only thing I could think maybe. Is they um, they had had a they had released this separately, right? I mean this this hit the internet, you know the I you know a much earlier, so maybe that's why they were like it's already out here. What the heck? Yeah, but okay. uh, but yeah, so so yeah, the uh, the trailer of course has. Apparently, Batman has gone off the deep end, and he's killed Commissioner Gordon and a bunch of other criminals and has become a major threat to Gotham City. So basically it's like the injustice version of Batman. He's gone completely off the edge, off the reservation. And so it's up to – and Jason Todd is in a wheelchair for some reason and tells Dick that he needs to come to Gotham City to save Gotham from Batman. That's the trailer we're given. Yeah, and and you know, there's so much that feeds into your theory because 
it's very sunny and nice when Bruce comes out in the suburb looking house on a front lawn. You mean Jason? Uh, well, no, Dick's coming out to meet him in that. Oh yeah, yeah, way. yeah. Right, right. You know, and it's like, well, where did that come from? Yeah, so it does seem so, like almost like a dream world. Yes, it or does. something and something. Um, yeah. Probably something similar to Raven's powers, you know, where she's yeah. able to enter dreams. Yes. But but so what I think is, yeah, this is all just a big attempt to corrupt Dick Grayson and try to turn him into a pawn to use against Rachel. Yes, I agree. that's that's my theory. We'll see if mm -hmm. I'm right. Okay. Uh, but but I'm staking my claim on that. So, yeah, that's I think that that's that, good. That, that evil Batman. It's not going to be the real thing. It's all going to be Trigon. Yes. So we'll see. All right. Anything else about this episode before we move on? I cannot think of anything. All right. What's your favorite quotes for this episode? We talked I, about a bunch of them. I did not have any uh, ready since I watched it yep. one in the morning. Yeah. So. yeah. All right. So I'll just run through several here. There was not as many quips this time, at least no. I don't think. No, there was a few. Okay. Uh, but, you're, but you're actually right about that. Uh, okay. Uh, we talked about Donna and Dick. You know, after Donna had thrown the tracker, she said, "What? You're not the only one with cool gadgets." Yes, which is a good line. Um, the exchange between Dick and Donna in the car, where Donna's calling, basically slut shaming Dick Grayson. Yes. Uh, where Donna says, "I'm sorry, I was. I'm sorry, I was right about your friend wanting to kill Rachel," and Dick says, "You weren't. Corey's not a killer. She kills people sometimes, but none of this makes sense." Yeah. Corey loves Corey loves Rachel. She's done nothing but try to help her. What you saw back there, that wasn't the real Corey. And Donna says, looks at him for a minute and goes, you're sleeping with her, aren't you? You're making too many excuses for her. And you have a thing for dangerous women. Dick's like, dangerous women. Donna says, except for Dawn, you F that up. And Dick's like, can you just drive, please? Yeah, I, I loved that. That was so good. That was a great moment. I love yes. that. I love these two together. I could just, I could just, you know, like yes. Dick and Donna on the road in a jeep driving the country and, and wackiness ensues. It's, it's, it's a perfect spinoff series. Absolutely. Um, Corey to Dick when, when Dick and Donna show up and confront her at the factory. Corey's like, who is she? And Donna steps up and says, I'm the person who knocked you out. Corey's like, bet you can't do it twice. <laughs> yeah. That was really, really nice. I'm betting she can, personally. Yes, I but, can, too. Um, and then uh, Corey kind of uh, giving the backstory on Trigon, on, on the spaceship. She says, Cor Corey says, this being was summoned to Earth to conceive a daughter. And Dick figures it out. Rachel. Well, yeah, because who else is it? would it be? Uh, Corey says, her father, Trigon. He was pulled back to his home and imprisoned. But she is the doorway that he can walk through, the anchor that will keep him here this time. Earth will be the first planet he will cover in his darkness, but eventually everything, all worlds, my world, will burn. Mm. Very ominous. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I like the line where Angela says after she stabs um, Tommy the sheriff, uh, I would have liked to get that drink, but I'm in a relationship. Yes, that was – yes, that was well done. That and was a great – She really line. sold that line well. Yes. Yeah, Rachel Nichols did a great yeah, job. That, that, delivery, that delivery was note perfect as yes. far as um, – And then, of course, we talked about the end of the episode where Angela asked Trigon, is it time to eat the world? And then Trigon says, of course, not until her heart breaks. Yes. So, all right, Good very stuff. ominous, ominous. All right, so what's your yeah. rating for this episode? So, um, despite my concerns with it, I um, I'm still gonna go with eight out of ten bowls of poisoned soup. Okay. I, Very nice. Yes. Very nice. Uh, I'm a little more generous again um, because we did finally get the necessary backstory with Corey. We got to see the cool spaceship. Got some yeah. great Dick and Donna chemistry and the introduction of Trigon. So I'm going to give this eight and a half lassos of persuasion. I I was going Just, to use the um, golden lasso, but I said I know Charles is going to pick that. Yep, yep. So good. Yeah. Right, I appreciate appreciate you uh, letting me have that one. No, I mean it's it, like I said, we're only a half a thing off. 
Um, it it's been a good thing. I, I um I do feel like um they could have just uh, <coughs> used a good editing when they right. sat down with the note cards where they're figuring out okay we're going to do 11 episodes what are we going to do and kind of look about that but yes and, and, and while we're on the subject why 11 episodes i thought we were supposed to get 12 episodes i don't know and like did they just forget to do one or is the season finale double length yeah i don't know or is one episode being held over for season two you know um, it feels like we're getting robbed an episode here, and I don't know why, and I haven't seen any explanation for that. So if anybody out there knows why we're only getting 11 instead of 12, please let me know because I am dying of curiosity on that. Um, it. My hope now is that we are getting two – that's a two-hour episode. I hope so. Yeah, I mean there is a lot it, going on, and a, that would be really cool. It would be because you could spend like the first hour, uh, first part, you know, with the whole Dick Grayson thing. Yeah. And then the second part with the big showdown with Trigon. Yeah, I do not think. I don't know if we're that's yeah. where we're going to get though. I mean, we're lucky if either. we can get the show can can barely do forty minutes it seems. So yeah. I don't know if we're going to get a full hour. And it would need to be the tool. I mean, if we do. Um, an hour and a half, you know, yeah. 45 and 45, yeah. Yeah. that would be good because I'll be happy would with explain an hour and a half. why could, why, um, you know, Hawk and Dove are going to come, you know, there's, right. there's a lot that could be explained in that. Yeah. We still haven't time. seen, yeah, but they still have to introduce Hawk and Dove showing up. So, yeah. and Jason Todd, remember Rachel said, go get yeah. Jason Todd. Right. So yeah, uh, we'll see. Yeah, but, absolutely. All right. Um, but it just – it strikes me just really weird to have an 11-episode season. That's all. It is. Okay. Um, do we have some feedback? We do have some feedback. I don't have any Titans Tower news uh, apart from this, the confusion about the season episodes. And that uh, – shocker, Batman is supposed to show up. Yeah, that's true. But we true. do not know who's cast – who is cast right. as Batman. They're very they're keeping that under wraps. So we'll see. Yeah, and I uh, wonder if we're just I wonder if they're going to cheat us and just give us shadows and um you know and not a true picture of Batman. Well, we we did see him pretty good in the trailer. Mm -hmm. If you remember that uh, we got a full body shot of him in the trailer, so fingers crossed there is Yeah, but did they show his face? They showed his face. I mean, like like in a mask, but yeah, okay. they showed his face. So we'll see. Okay. I don't know how long he gets, like if he's going to be talking much, but we'll see. Um, we should ask. Um, probably, you know, probably like the, you know, that amount is about as much as we saw in the, if you remember the original Birds of Prey pilot. Yeah. Back in the day. Maybe, uh, maybe we should see if someone can. Um, um, do a facial recognition scan and tell us who it is. Yes. Yeah, yeah. All right. So we'll, we'll, let me contact my guy at the NSA and okay. we'll, figure, we'll do, run a facial recognition program on Sounds that. Sounds good. Yeah, all right. Um, so we do have some uh, uh, Titan Talk feedback. Um, so telling, telling into Titan Talk, uh, we get the return of Michael Roten. And oh, apparently nice. it's. I mean, apparently it's rotten instead of rotten, so I apologize for butchering your name. I'm guessing you probably get a lot of people butchering your name. Yes. Uh, but uh, but he does correct me and us on Good. that because um, he says rotten is spelled rotan. So okay. so rotten, Michael Rotten, uh, writing in. Hello again, Titan Talkers. Life has been busy, so I'm lagging a bit behind. I've recently watched Donna Troy and Hank and Dawn, and wanted to give my thoughts. Nice. Oh, really? I really liked the Donna Troy episode, as did we. Uh, the actress was great, as was her chemistry with Dick. Uh, I would happily watch a Donna Troy slash Wonder Girl spinoff featuring either Connor Leslie or the actress who played the younger Donna. Yeah, both were good. Uh, I was, wasn't quite as fond of Hank and Dawn. It wasn't a bad episode. It just pulled me out of the story and spoiled the momentum a bit. Yeah, we felt that as well. Um, only the last five minutes were really relevant to the overall story arc. I re really enjoyed watching the episode and have a bit more sympathy for Hank now, but on future rewatches, I could see myself skipping this episode. 
I wouldn't skip the episode. I think it's a great episode, but that's me. I understand why, though, if you're trying I, to. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, yeah. May, maybe if you want to watch it in a different order. Yeah. That's what I would do. Um, well, keep up the great work and have a great week, Michael. And then he said, you know, of course, P.S. Rotten is Rotan. So okay. Michael, Michael Roten, thank you very much for correcting us. And yes. uh, we will try to do better with your name next time. But Absolutely. Thanks for, thanks for understanding, Michael. And thanks again for writing in. So we definitely appreciate that. Uh, of course, wouldn't be Titan Talk without DJ Nick. Exactly. So DJ Nick, DJ Nick writes in, hey, guys, what a treat and what an episode we got this week. Love the horror elements mixed in with some sci-fi for good measure on this one. Was awesome to finally get our first glimpse of, of Seamus Dever as this season's big bad Trigon himself. Quote, a man of wealth and taste. So I, it's hard to call it the season's big bad. Yeah. And he only has shown up in the last, next to right. last episode. Well, not they were correcting. I'm not, I'm not. They were building me. toward him. It's not like yeah. it was a surprise to yeah. us. No, but just anyway. Yeah. I mean, it seemed like they were building right toward Trigon. Oh, like, absolutely. Uh, we talked about that. Uh, great job was done by all concerned from Tegan Croft to Rachel Nichols as Angela Azarath, who showed her true colors in this episode. Oh, did she? Yes. And uh, you also have to love the brother-sister bond between Brenton Thwaites and Connor Leslie. Not to mention seeing the appearance of that ever-loved Lasso of Persuasion. Looking forward to discussing what will no doubt be an amazing season finale with you guys next week. Talk soon and all the best, DJ Nick. Yay. Yay. Thank you very much, DJ Nick. Always exactly. great to hear from you. And thank you, Michael, for writing in. We definitely appreciate that. So everybody, if you want to be like Michael and DJ Nick, and you want to write in, let us know what your thoughts are. Uh, you can reach us here at Titan Talk at TitanTalkCast at gmail.com that's TitanTalkCast at gmail.com or you can drop us a line on Facebook at Titan Talk the Titans Podcast or on Twitter at TitanTalkCast and uh, I want to give a special shout out on Twitter if I find it here real quick um, we got uh, I think we got some feedback here from Ann Deacon on Twitter, who uh, was kind enough to write in some stuff, and so I want to give a little shout out to Anne. Oh, Thank nice! You. So very cool you, to hear from you. Do you have her tweets handy? I do. Where you I do if you want to read them. Yes, yeah. please. Let's share okay. them. Okay, real quick. Uh, I was trying to hurry on because I, I understand. Just... Yes. Okay. All right. All right. Um, but I did want to give a shout out. Uh, so tonight, she writes into Titan Talk on the Twitter, and she says, uh, "Really enjoying your podcast." Uh, for what it's worth, read Donna Troy episode. I believe Donna wanted Dick to, quote, have an interaction that was not agenda-driven rather than gender-driven. Goes better with conversation instead of interrogation. So uh, she's referring to my comment that I thought that Donna had said agenda or gender-driven. And she's correcting me that it was actually agenda-driven, which makes perfect sense, and I appreciate the correction. I just thought that personally, and I wrote back to Anne, I said, well, I just thought that Donna was just giving Dick a hard time about uh, his sexual exploits. Yes. And which she does in this episode here that we just talked about. So um, I don't think that was out of character, but I get where you're coming from. And, and thank you for correcting me because you're right. Agenda driven does make more sense. Uh, she also says, I hope she uh, she Donna presumably has a chance to do that. in the funny she was responding to my comment. I thought it was funny that she said your friend Corey every time she mentioned Starfire, like Dick made a point to say my, my friend Corey had this alphabet all over her storage shed. Mm -hmm. And then she says, I'd also like to add a quote I liked from episode eight, quote, her mom worked my where, her mom worked with my dad sometime. So we ended up hanging out a lot. It's a throwaway line, but it made me smile. Also, Dick was completely oblivious to Paul, the guy hitting on him trying to hit on him so yes so and thanks for uh for chiming in definitely appreciate that so hope you're enjoying the podcast and uh thanks for dropping us a line on twitter so, absolutely john oh go ahead i'm sorry Charles. no go ahead i'm done i'm done john h adams on the titan talk the titans podcast facebook page posted right. i am a new listener to your titan talk podcast i listen to the shows while i'm at work and then he published 
a re he recommends us saying very knowledgeable and insightful about Titans TV show and everything DC. The host also have a com complimentary no comment I'm sure I'm sure complimentary show about go. Doctor Who. So thank you, John. Um, we do do yeah, the thanks. Doctor Who episode. Um, this podcast, yes, we yes, do. Yes, we do. So yeah, so um, uh, Jesse, why don't you go ahead and give us uh, some shameless plugs while we're at it? Since I will. We um, yes. On that note, and thank you, and thank you again, John, for for recommending us on Facebook. That's very awesome of you to do that. That we is. Did, we obviously very unsolicited. So thank yes. you so much for doing that. It was really nice. Uh, yes, uh, Charles and I can be heard talking. Uh, Doctor Who on Deck Stop Everywhere, the Doctor Who podcast. Uh, we are just finishing up the latest uh, series with Jodie Whittaker's first turnaround, Trip in the TARDIS as the Doctor. Right. Um, spoilers, we like it. Um, and uh, we will be talking soon about one of the classic uh, holiday Christmas specials, A Christmas Carol. Uh, we will also be discussing the New Year's Day special, um, and um, so lots I of stuff be, coming up. Yeah, yeah, a lot of stuff coming up. I can be heard on Set Lusty Bruce, the Bruce Springsteen podcast, where I talk to fans from around the world of Bruce Springsteen. We might be discussing the new Netflix special. That dropped at 2 a.m. this morning, <laughs> which I may have, after I watched the Titans, watched five minutes of and said, okay, Jesse, just just go to sleep. Go to sleep. Yo, you had to pull yourself away from it. Yeah, that, I'm impressed because I didn't think you could do that. You and Charles have to talk in the morning, and you yep. need to be awake. Well, um, yes. uh, for, speaking for the podcast, I appreciate you uh, forcing yourself away and get some rest. Absolutely. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Jesse Jackson DFW. You can find uh, – I have a Facebook page, uh, which is Jesse Jackson if you search Louisville, Texas. And um, Charles, how about you? Where can they find you on social media? Well, I'm all over social media in case you haven't noticed. Uh, you can reach me at Charles Skaggs on the Twitter machine, at Charles Skaggs on Instagram. For all you crazy kids on the Instagram, Google Plus, for all those of you still on Google Plus, I don't know why at this point, but I'm there as well. Um, Face course, Charles Skaggs in Hilliard, Ohio. And my blog at Geeky Things. Damn good coffee. Hot. Damn good coffee and hot, where I talk about all the stuff we talk about here on Titan Talk, including. Titans news, news of Young Justice, Doom Patrol that's coming up, news of Stargirl. And there's a lot of news on Stargirl because they're casting the Justice Society as we speak. They are so really very, good stuff. Very geeked about that because I'm a huge Justice Society fan. So uh, definitely looking forward to Stargirl when it comes out. Um, and then, you know, all kinds of comic book sci-fi news, news of my other podcasts I do for Southgate Media, including the aforementioned Next Stop Everywhere, the Doctor Who podcast I do with Jesse and Karen Lindsay, friend of the show. And then the Phantom Zone podcast I do with Karen, where we talk about comic book shows on TV. And fingers crossed, we're going to review the Elseworlds event tonight as we record. So hopefully that comes off because we've been away a while. But we're going to review the uh, big DCCW crossover, Elseworlds. And Which then, of course... Yes. Spoilers was pretty cool. <laughs> well, if anything else, it sets up the big next year's crossover, Crisis on Infinite Earths, which if you're a DC Comics fan, you have to be geeking really hard about because yeah. even though it's going to be a TV version, it's going to be a version of Crisis. And I, as a huge Crisis on Infinite Earths fan, are definitely looking forward to that. So it's going to yeah. be a long wait to 2019. Yeah, absolutely. And – um. And then, of course, my other podcast, last podcast, Ghost with the Twin Peaks podcast they do with Zan Sprouse, wife of comic book artist Chris Sprouse, where we talk about all things Twin Peaks, David Lynch, etc. Okay, uh, yeah. next time on Titan Talk, we're going to talk about, of course, Dick Grayson, not just the character, but that's the episode title, 
you know, we've we've once talked again, about that. They... Once again, a little more effort, guys, than <laughs> just naming it episodes after the characters. Uh, so Dick Grayson, the Titans season one finale, episode eleven. Not sure why it's not twelve, unless it's double double length. Um, where Dick Grayson takes a dark journey back to Gotham in the finale. And uh, as we t- talked about, we'll face off against Batman. But is he really facing off against Batman? That's the question. And I'm thinking not. Yeah, I, I think see. so, too. Um, and so it's going to be interesting. Um, just so you know, we're um, this episode is going to drop the Friday before the holiday weekend, uh, Charles and I are both figuring out when we'll be able to record. So this may be a day or two late in your feed, but we are definitely going to be talking about it and excited. And then we're going to have the postseason wrap up with special guest star DJ Nick. That's right. So you've heard him in all kinds of emails to the show. Now maybe you actually get to hear him as uh, we planning our season one wrap up episode. So that'll be coming up here after we talk the finale. So stay tuned. We, uh, we obviously have more stuff to talk about here on Titans because lots of Titan stuff to talk about. So, uh, everybody else, uh, thank you so much for listening to Titan talk. We definitely appreciate it. And, uh, we will come on back for Dick Grayson, the Titan season one finale next week. And, uh, other than that, Jesse, anything else? Just thank you, Charles. As always, this is a joy. Thank you, listeners. Um, so get your popcorn ready, and we'll see Robin versus Batman. Yeah, so that could be a lot of fun. So we'll see what happens. Come on back. It's going to be good. Titan Talk, the Titans podcast. We'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Titans fans, welcome back to Next Stop. All right, I have to start over again. <laughs> All right, now this will be my this post will, that, Yes, I know, I, I, I know. I, I, I totally see this coming. That's, yes, that's, yes. that's so – but you know so what? Ma- so many podcasts. Charles, I do not know how you have not done that before uh, because I'm always – I want to say, and there's my favorite Whovian, yeah. and like, no, 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 it, Titan Talker. It's, it's, Titan yeah. Talker, yeah. Yes, uh-huh. yes. Because right. it's both it, – it's just you and I, so – Well, we started talking about ne- next stop yes. recording tomorrow night, so I got it. Unfortunately, my brain just locked into that. All right, yeah. so let's try this again. All right, here we go. Uh, take two. Take, take, Three, take two. Two, one.